Hello, future environmental scientists. I'm Jen Pontius, the director of the environmental science program here at the University of Vermont Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources. Normally, I'd be meeting you and your families at our admitted student days, but strange times call for strange measures, so I'm going to attempt to give you all the information you might need about our environmental science program in this five minute video. Are you ready? Probably most important is for you to understand what environmental science is as a discipline. And really, it's an interdisciplinary field, meaning that we have to understand the biology, geology, chemistry, ecology, and a host of other ologies that form the scientific foundation of how ecosystems work. And then environmental science is really the study of applying scientific methods to solve environmental problems. So in this sense, I think of environmental science as the forensic science of the natural world. We ask all sorts of questions like, what is the problem in this system? How can we quantify it? What might be causing this problem? What are the impacts to the rest of the ecosystem? How can we mitigate this problem? And then once we do take action, are our actions even working? So really, we're all about asking questions with a specific goal to solve complex environmental problems. You'll see that right in the mission statement for our environmental science program here at UVM. We really are about applying science and technical knowledge, sort of more like a professional degree, where we really prepare our students to go out there and conquer some of the most complex environmental problems by combining this sort of foundational scientific knowledge about the natural world, but also professional skills about how to actually solve environmental problems. You'll find environmental scientists employed in a variety of different jobs depending on what environmental discipline they choose to concentrate on. But really, it's very common for our graduates to go on and work for government agencies, nonprofit organizations, research institutions, state governments, and consulting firms. It really comes down to what you're most passionate about and how you want to spend your day. Now, if you had just Googled environmental science to try to figure out what the heck you were getting yourself into, you might stumble across this Wikipedia page. And it says a lot of what we just described, but the thing that I find really interesting is right at the top, it warns you not to be confused with environmental studies or environmental engineering. So I think that's a really good place to go next. What is the difference between environmental science, environmental studies, and environmental engineering? Because there is overlap between these fields, I find it useful to think of them in terms of a continuum. So let's imagine that we have environmental studies on one side of the continuum, environmental science in the middle, and environmental engineering on the other. There are a couple different ways to think about this continuum. One is just what's the disciplinary focus? What type of classes might I be taking? Environmental studies tends to be very focused on the social sciences. So for example, policy, economics, environmental law, history. And then you move into more of the natural sciences and environmental science, more of your biologies, chemistries, ecology, geology, soil science, atmospheric science, mammalogy, wildlife. And then on the other end of the continuum would be engineering, which really is much more focused on your physics and math and how you actually build structures. Another way to think of this continuum is in terms of how you might spend your day in a job. Environmental studies graduates are typically working with people either in outreach, education, government, developing policy, whereas environmental scientists are usually the ones out in the field or in the lab taking measurements, making observations, really trying to understand exactly what's going on. And then the environmental engineers on the other side of the continuum are usually going to be on site and then in their office working in software to design and build structures to solve problems. So hopefully that helps clarify the differences between these disciplines that do overlap but are definitely preparing you for um, specific career trajectories. But even just considering environmental science, it's still a really broad discipline and it doesn't look the same at every university. Some require a tour of the ologies. So for example, you might be required to take a hydrology, a geology, an atmospheric science, an ecology, so that you really are getting a broad view of that interdisciplinary structure that makes environmental science what it is. Um, others focus very heavily on chemistry or pollutant movement to prepare you for lab careers. Um, others will actually pull in quite a bit of policy and social sciences preparing you more for advocacy type positions. So I think it's really important for you to look at the coursework for these different programs because even if the mission statement or the learning objectives are the same or seem the same at different institutions, if you look at the actual 
actual coursework you're required to take, it's going to paint a much clearer picture of exactly how you are being prepared. Here at UVM, we think of ourselves as a little bit more like a professional degree in that we are absolutely preparing our environmental science graduates for jobs as scientists to go out there so that they are ready to tackle these environmental problems. And so because of that, we have a tour of some ologies, so you are required to take some of the foundational coursework. For example, you have to take two biology courses, two chemistry and an organic chemistry, and environmental geology or soil science. We need two semesters of calculus, and you need some applied statistics. But it's not just about having that foundational knowledge. We want you to have the professional skills to be able to apply that knowledge to solve problems. And so therefore, the core courses that we require our students to take for the major are all very applied. So for example, in our global environmental assessment class in the sophomore year, students will be using geospatial technologies to figure out how to monitor and assess environmental conditions on a landscape scale. You'll actually be out in the field collecting samples to track and monitor pollutant movement. In ENSC 201, we actually partner with local landowners to help restore degraded ecosystems, and you are actually developing that ecological restoration plan and implementing it. And then when you get into ENSC 202, you are actually being taught the methodologies used by the EPA and state agencies to write environmental impact statements. These are all tangible products and skills that are going to go onto your resume and into your portfolio to demonstrate your preparation for, the, for your career. And this curriculum has been specifically designed so that these aren't just standalone one-off courses, but they're actually helping to build your competency in four different areas that we feel are critical for all of our graduates. And that's that you know how to apply a range of appropriate scientific methods, that you know how to use a systems approach when addressing environmental issues, that you're practiced in both critically assessing and communicating science, and that you have the tools you need to be able to design really sustainable environmental solutions. And then on top of that, obviously, we also want our students to choose a concentration so they can deepen their understanding in some very uh, more focused field within environmental science as a discipline. The concentration is a critical part of your curriculum because it really is where you're going to begin to deepen and develop your expertise in the subfield of environmental science that you're most passionate about. We have nine that are sort of prepackaged and ready to go. These fit what we know the job market is looking for and what the current environmental uh, landscape looks like in terms of where we need expertise. So you might find that you are drawn to one of these, but we also have a self-design option and we often have our students um, creating their own concentration that really does fit what they hope to do um, in their future careers. Some common ones include environmental health, renewable energy, or sustainable development. Um, but we've also had students do some that do tend to have more of a social science bent to them, for example, environmental outreach and education. Um, and then we also have students who will complete an entire concentration while studying abroad. So for example, we've had several students who have been interested in marine biology, oceanography, or marine science that they've been able to go and spend a semester abroad and bring back their entire concentration. I think one of the most important things about this curriculum I've just described here at UVM for environmental science isn't just the intentional uh, structure of the coursework and how it really is training you to be an environmental professional, but it's also how those courses are taught. It's the pedagogies. And we're so lucky in Vermont to be right in the middle of a beautiful living laboratory. We have the lake, we have the mountains, we have the, the diverse agricultural system that surrounds us. We have Burlington as an urban environment. You know, we have a, a green roof on the top of our building on Aiken. And all of these provide really easy access for us to have our students out in the field and all of these classes with their hands getting dirty, doing the science, um, and that really is one of the things that I think sets apart this UVM program from many of our competitors. So hopefully now you understand what environmental science is, how it differs from environmental studies and environmental engineering, and what makes environmental science at UVM unique. But there's still one other pressing question that most of our incoming admitted students ask, and that's, what is this environmental science split across three schools? And that's because even though the major is the same across all of those three schools, what you do outside of the major differs. 
So for example, if you really are interested in sort of more of those applied skills and the professional preparation for a career, the Rubenstein School really is where you would want to be because we have additional core Rubenstein courses that are required of all of our students that make sure that no matter what your major, you all understand both the social science aspects of environmental issues and the natural science aspects. And then we teach you how to integrate across those disciplines and then put you into a capstone course where you're paired with local organizations to actually work as an environmental consultant. If, on the other hand, you really are interested in sustainable agriculture, in food systems, then the College of Agriculture and Life Science is where you want to be because the additional coursework you'd be doing outside of the major there is going to broaden your expertise in agricultural systems. If you really are interested in lots of different things and you want to have more of a liberal arts education, then the College of Arts and Sciences is where you want to be, right? So the major is the same. It's what you're required to do for the school outside of your major that differs. And it's also pretty easy to transfer back and forth among them once you're here. And just as an example of how these opportunities for ENSE majors are the same no matter what school you're in, the Rubenstein School hosts an internship and career center with full-time staff whose one goal is to help our students find extracurricular experiences that are relevant to their career fields. And I can't stress how important this is because really just taking the classes is never going to be enough. You have to show that you've been able to do environmental science and that's going to give you such a leg up. So we really are on top of our all of our students to make sure they have the support and opportunity they need to do internships either on campus, back home, or with all of the myriad of organizations that we partner with. We also have an Office of International Education on campus, and that's because study abroad has become so much more popular. It's not like it used to be where you would just go to another university and study there for a semester or a year. There really are so many fabulous programs that are specifically designed for dis different disciplines, and we send quite a few students to programs like Round River in Botswana and Patagonia or EcoQuest in New Zealand, and the Rubenstein School hosts its own semester abroad in the Osa Peninsula of Costa Rica. And this is just because we feel it's so important for your personal growth to sort of step outside of your comfort zone and again, get your hands dirty actually doing some of this important conservation work. So uh, these courses and these programs really do transfer back in quite a few credits and, and often uh, cost less than what out-of-state tuition would be at UVM. I think the final thing I want to stress is the teacher scholar model that is the center of the academics at UVM. We really are a mid-sized school, so we have all of our faculty actively engaged in cutting edge research, but at the same time, these are the faculty who are going to be teaching you. They are going to be the ones advising you. We really engage our students in the work that we do uh, to our benefit and to their benefit. So you actually will get to know your faculty and you will be able to be a part of the work that they're doing. Thanks for sticking with me. My five minutes turned into a little bit more than five minutes. Hopefully I've answered a lot of the common questions that you have, but I do have one last piece of advice, and that's don't worry. Take a deep breath. You are going to be great no matter where you end up and what program you end up in. And if you have any questions, you can always contact me. I'll stick my email address right there. Thanks for listening in, and hopefully we'll see you next year.